Uh, okay, Sharpe can be uh, ca categorized into uh, mainly two groups, uh, which we will cover in, in our class. Is that one is that uh, cross section, uh, circular cross section, uh, is one group, and the second group is the a uh, section which has the thin wall, uh, hollow, closed section, uh, something like that. We're not going to cover a section with a, uh, open. Uh, which we, 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 we will not cover, and a shaft with um, rectangular cross section like that uh, won't be covered neither. So uh, the, the uh, shaft with this circular can be either uh, solid or op uh, hollow. Uh, the theory we have uh, uh, covered last class will be uh, equally applied to either this one or that. Uh, these uh, the two cross sections. So main idea, main uh, uh, issue is starting with this observation of a geometric deformation. And most important observation is that this is the uh, uh, P4 deformation. And after deformation, this uh, point will move here, and this line is the straight. Uh, that's the key key idea here. Okay, why why is it straight? Why it has to be straight? Well, uh, in other words, it cannot be have a deformation like that, or cannot have a this deformation like that. The main reason is that. If we do not have a straight line, uh, let's say we cut into uh, several pieces, and if we, we pay attention to uh, this one, and this one and that one is actually uh, subject to the uh, same torque, and should, should uh, experience the same deformation. And to have the same deformation, the only way is the straight line, meaning that this, uh, with respect to uh, this bottom, bottom plane, and this top plane has a relative uh, rotation this much, and which should be the same as this one, and same as this one. So all three parts will uh, experience the same deformation. Uh, to have the, uh, those same uh, deformation, the only way is that uh, we have to have uh, this, this uh, straight line, otherwise the each part will experience dif uh, different deformation. Okay, so uh, this uh, line has to be a straight line. That's very important uh, observation. If the cross section is not the uh, uh, circular, then the behavior and deformation will be a little could be a little bit uh, different. Uh, anyhow, that's the first part of our observation, and then. Um, then we end up with this three deformation field. Actually, u theta and u r and u z and the or u z and u r is a zero and only non-zero displacement is u theta, which is proportional to r and z, r and z coordinate, and we have a six component of strain in polar coordinate system. All components are zero except this gamma uh, z theta. Gamma z theta is the uh, strain with respect. Let's say we can have uh, some uh, um, a, a shape and this deformation. Deformation will be uh, this is a, a z z and theta and the z theta. Uh, Okay, so uh, this this uh, strain is the uh, gamma uh, z theta, and by definition, uh, this is the uh, defined as like that, and only non-zero displacement term is u theta, and if you put it here, then the, this is the uh, strain we will have. Okay, this is the so uh, again, this c is not determined yet. We don't know uh, we don't know uh, what this c will be. And next, by observing this uh, 
deformation, uh, meaning this A point moves A prime and this displacement can be described by two way. One is the R dV, R times dV should be this one, or this is the dz, this is dz times this uh, shear strain should be uh, this one as well. So uh, R times dV should be dz times gamma, uh, z theta should be the same. So from this uh, observation, we have the gamma z theta should be a dV dz times R. And, and previously we had this C times R and C is a simply uh, this one and which should be a constant. Constant meaning that uh, is not the function of R, is not the function of Z. It's just simply constant and which should be uh, determined by the torque we apply and the size of the shaft and material property. So anyhow, uh, the next step is that uh, we use the stress-strain relations, simply uh, this one, uh, tau equal g gamma, and gamma we already have that, which is the r, r dz dv, and uh, this is the uh, relation between uh, external torque and shear stress uh, distributing in, in cross-section. So tau times dA, tau times dA will be a force and we need to multiply R uh, to have the torque and integration of the surface uh, which will give us the torque and this tau should go in there and then um, and g, this g and dv dz can be constant and out of integration and this r square dA is a simply uh, IP, polar moment of inertia. And so uh, finally we have the uh, dv dz. This is the relation we, uh, we got uh, from this derivation. And dV dz is simply uh, expressed by uh, the rotation at the end and over length L. When this shaft is subject to an end torque. So uh, finally we have V0 is the displacement and TL over uh, GI, GIP. This is the quite similar to a, a delta equal in a bar when you apply force P then the delta should be P times L over EA and you, you, you can see the analogy between this uh, uh, torsional deformation and, and uh, uh, bar deformation. And another important result is the, this shear stress tau tau shear stress, it should be, again, force divided by cross-sectional property, right? Always stress should be defined as the force divided by area. And force in this case is the torque T and area is the polar moment of inertia. And again, this, uh, we need R uh, representing a linear variation uh, over the surface and that's the tau. But uh, again, this, uh, the concept is very much similar to a P over A in a bar case. And this analogy is sum summarized here uh, between bar and shaft. And, and I want you to understand uh, each terms and helping uh, you understand both uh, bar and, and shaft Okay, that was the uh, first, uh, first part of the torsion theory. And th this is the uh, a sort of a second part of the torsion. And again, the shaft cross-sectional uh, shape is the hollow, thin wall, actually closed uh, shaft. And these cross-sections uh, 
uh, can include a wing. Okay, wing also has the uh, mostly uh, a thin wall, hollow shaft. So this theory can be applied to a, a wing uh, <coughs> of air, either airplane or a wind turbine blade. So this kind of uh, torsion theory is very uh, important for real applications. So anyhow, uh, a uh, shaft with this kind of cross section is subject to a torque T and less, less, uh, uh, less try to drive how much stress distribute and how much uh, torque we will have, I mean the deformations, same as before. How much uh, deformation we will have and how much stress we will have. Actually, uh, the geometry is quite more complicated than uh, circular cross-section, but theory, okay, theory is rather simple. Uh, okay, so uh, uh, I will read here, as shown in the figure on the left, N, S, and Z. This is the coordinate system. N, S, Z. N is the uh, uh, outward normal directional uh, vector and S is the uh, coordinate system along this uh, uh, wall and Z is the, uh, the uh, longitudinal direction, same as the, the torque we applied. So and as you can see, N and S is uh, those coordinate directions are varying along with uh, th this uh, wall. Uh, so N, S, and Z re represent normal hoop and axial direction of the shaft. The variation of the thickness, okay, the variation of the thickness in S directions is negligible comprising with that compare with the dimension of the entire cross section, which means that this thickness, okay, this thickness can be very small compared to uh, other dimensions. Other dimension means that, uh, you know, this kind of a um, diameter or width of the shaft. And, but that doesn't mean. Uh, Thickness is, uh, T should be uh, uh, constant. In other words, th thickness T, okay, thickness T can be a function of S. I thickness can be a, either thinner somewhere, can be thicker. I the variation and the thickness can vary. And to understand the response of such a structure and the torsion, uh, firstly, we need to consider the de uh, definition of a shear flow. Okay, the definition of a shear flow is very critical, really critical. Uh, what, what does the uh, shear flow means? Okay, so our first concept in, in this um, section is the shear flow. And shear flow is a simply shear stress. Shear stress, shear stress can be uh, can exist like that through the thickness, and we just integrate this sh uh, shear stress through the thickness. Okay, through the thickness. This thickness. This is a simply shear flow. Like this one is the water channel, and then water is flowing, flowing through these channels, and that's why we call it a shear flow. Okay, uh, it looks like uh, some uh, uh, stream or water is flowing along this line, and 
Uh, similarly, we have a sh shear stress. It's a flow along this uh, uh, channel, and the integration of uh, this thickness is called uh, shear flow. And then, uh, and then we simply take a part, a part of this uh, shaft uh, this much. Okay, we just take this uh, uh, this part and apply force equilibrium to this part. Again, this whole whole uh, section is subject to a, a torque T, and there. There should exist some shear stress distributions, okay? And we just take some part part of this part of this shaft, and and again this is a delta z, and this from here to there is arbitrary portion. We just take some part uh, from that uh, that one, and then. Uh, this again, we define. Uh, we can say that there is uh, some uh, shear stress distribute, and this shear stress is distributed like that, and until here. And as we understand the sigma x y equals sigma y z uh, x y, shear stress should be always a symmetry, meaning that. In a, uh, any uh, any uh, square cross sections, we if we have this shear stress, we always have to have a same uh, shear stress in in uh, in the other uh, sections, and same for here to have moment equilibrium, right? And let's say this is, it can be x y. This concept it can be equally applied to uh, this one as well. So if we have this much shear stress, we should have the same amount of shear stress, which should be same as this one. Okay, this shear and this shear, they do not. They don't have to be the same, but this shear stress, this shear stress, they have to be the same because of this uh, uh, moment equilibrium. If we consider small part of this section and this top, uh, sh the stress on the top and the stress in, in, in this plane, they should be the same. And same for here. If we have some shear stress distribution here, then in, in uh, this surface, the stress in this surface should be also same as this is shear stress. This is a very uh, uh, important uh, observation. So anyhow, this we we let's say this is the tau A and this is the tau B. And let's say delta Z is a small, then tau A times thickness T. Delta Z will be the force at, at, uh, in, 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 in downward, right? And force, force applied to this surface will be tau B times thickness T and length delta Z, okay? And this bottom part, where there must be some other stress. But here, let's say, let's consider full z-directional force. Okay, z-directional force. Do we have any z-directional force on this surface? No, there's no z-directional force. At the bottom surface, do we have any z directional? Z direction is again this one. Do we have any component in, in uh, z directional component? No. no. Do we have this component, uh, z directional component? Yes. yes. 
which is tau a times t delta z, right? And do we have this z directional force here? Yes, which is the tau b uh, times t delta z. And this one is the negative, and this is the positive, and force equilibrium in z direction should be zero. Right? Should be zero. And this thickness at here, okay, thickness is the here is TA, for instance, and thickness here can be TB. So I put the TA and TB. And as you can see here, it's simply tau A times TA equal tau B times TB. Very important result. Actually, uh, in more precisely, we have to write down tau integration through the thickness at A, A means here, should be same as tau integration dt at section B. In other words, any shear stress on top surface, okay, this is the same as here, and this is the same as here. So this one and that, shear stress, integration, shear stress integrated over the thickness should be always same as same, here, 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 and here. But this cross-section is arbitrary. We, if we consider this, this part, that part, we can easily conclude that this one, shear stress integrate over thickness should be the same, right? And this is the call shear flow, Q. Again, shear flow is defined as the integration of the shear stress through the thickness. And from this z-directional force equilibrium, we, you can see that shear flow should be always the same, always the same. In fact, any cross uh, over the, this line, over the, this channel, shear flow is always the same. It doesn't matter the thickness is the thinner or thicker. Shear flow is always the uh, uh, same. As you can see, that's the same conclusion we have. QA, simply QA is the uh, shear stress integrated over through the thickness at cross section here. And the shear flow QB, uh, I need to correct something. Well, this A means that not the A area, only this thickness, okay? Only this thickness. And the shear flow QB, QB is the shear stress through the thickness at, at, uh, through, uh, at point B. So anyhow, uh, this QA and QB should be the same because of a, what? Because of a, which directional force equilibrium? Z direction. That's the important. Okay. Z, because of a Z directional force equilibrium, this one is a, this is the same, and this has, has to be same, and this has to be same. Finally, this and this, they have to be same. Okay, so uh, uh, shear flow is always constant in a thin world, thin world, hollow shaft, subject to a torque. Okay. So anyhow. Uh, Shear flow is always the same. So let, let me ask one question. If we have the very, some air is very thin and some air is very thick like that, 
Okay, here is very thin and here is very thick. And subject to a talk T. And where do we have the maximum shear stress? Right, in, in thinnest part here, because the Q is always constant, and Q is the defined as the, in average sense, tau times T equal constant. If we have the very thin, the shear stress has to be very large. Okay? If you have the very thick, then shear stress is very low to have the uh, constant. That's uh, uh, important. And shear, now we know, now we have the conclusion that, okay, shear flow needs to be constant. Very useful and very simple conclusion. Now, that shear flow, how much shear flow? We don't know yet. That shear flow is caused by external torque. So now we want to relate between this shear flow Q and apply torque T. Okay, what would be the relation between Q and T? Here is the derivation. Okay, now we consider small portion and length is delta S. And again, this is the, uh, we have the shear flow Q. Delta S and shear flow Q. And this is the whole cross-section is subject to a torque T. Now, how much uh, torque we can calculate from this uh, small part, small uh, portion? Q, Q times delta S is what? Will be the force, right? Why? Usually, tau the shear stress times A should be the force, but Q already has the uh, tau times the thickness, right? And uh, we need to only multiply the lengths. Then T and delta S give us the area, and so uh, this Q times delta S will be a force. Right? Shear force, of course. Force. Now, force times this distance, not the length, distance H should be, should uh, contribute to a uh, torque. Right? So, uh, uh, Q times delta S, Q times delta S, and H is a torque, and we simply integrate over the all, all portion, and this should be torque applied on these sections. Okay? Now, how about this Q? Well, this Q, as we noticed previously, this Q is a constant, independent of this uh, S. That means Q is just simply out of integration, and we have H times dS equal Q. What is this, this, uh, this one? H times dS. H is again this one and this. Well, simply ds times H is the very much relate to the area of this triangle, right? The actually this dA is simply 
half of h times delta s. Right? Just a half of this, or sorry, twice of this h times ds is the twice of this cross uh, uh, area of this triangle. So if we integrate like this one, and again this area, and again this area, again in this area, and so on, so on. Okay? So uh, this one is uh, simply 2 times A. A is the whole cross-sectional area enclosed by this wall. So uh, uh, 2 times A times Q equal T. So simply Q is T over T over E A, uh, 2 A, 2 times A. Very simple result. 2 over uh, T over 2 A. And here you have to be careful. What is this A? Is the A is this one or this one? A is this one, okay? The whole, whole area enclosed by this wall. Not this one. <coughs> As you can see here, H integration dA is the two, two times of the, the whole uh, uh, enclosed area. It, that's the uh, relation and, and conclusion we have. Okay? That is the relation between shear flow and torque. And he, again, we have the, the unknown shear flow. Previously, we had a conclusion that sh shear flow is a simply constant, regardless of this torque T. That was the one conclusion from z-directional force equilibrium. Now, how do we relate uh, this T and Q, we consider this integration and simply the shear flow Q, which is the constant, is a, as a function of T, torsion torque you, we apply and divide by twice of area. Okay? <coughs> And shear flow Q is simply, in average sense, uh, tau average times T. So this tau, tau is a simply, tau is a simply um, T over 2 times A T. That's it. That's the... Uh, uh, shear stress distribution. Let's compare it to a shear stress, you know, the T over IPR. Do you remember this one? Uh, we drive from a circular cross section, and and to drive this one, uh, we need to consider, you know, deformation and strain stress and stress and torque and the long derivation. Whereas this is a rather simple procedure, only um, definition between torque T and the shear flow. And again, the, the, this one, if you, you look at this one, stress is a simply force divided by cross-sectional area, right? Force divided by A. And but here A, we have another terms because torque T is a simply force times uh, the distance. How about the deformation?
How about the deformation? You know, angle of twist. How much? Uh, if we have the shaft with a, a thin hollow shaft and we apply torque, and how much deformation? Uh, deformation we will have. And this is a little uh, complicated than before, but let's call uh, it is called angle of twist. And previously we defined phi. I uh, should have used the same uh, definition. But anyhow, here we say we are saying that. This is the angle of rotation, theta. And this theta should be the same as the phi in the last def uh, 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 definition. So anyhow, this is the z. And this is the axis we apply torque. And this is the xy plane. And this whole cross section is rotating by angle theta. And let's take a look at the, this small uh, area, OK? And this one, of course, uh, this will subject to a, uh, this is the before deformation. And this one will, will deform like that. Be, uh, because of this uh, shear flow. And we have uh, two angle changes. One is the phi one, and the other one is the phi two. Because in this way, we have the uh, tangential displacement, okay, tangential displacement, and this, this way, we have the Z directional displacement. Okay, Z directional displacement. And gamma is simply defined as the these two angles, phi one and phi two, right? Phi one and phi two. And this phi one is uh, simply defined as this angle uh, change phi1 is defined uh, simply this is the displacement s s directional displacement with respect to z right this is a dz and this is the s directional displacement and phi2 is the uh, Z, uh, Z directional displacement with respect to D, DS, right, DS. You know, th th this one is what? This is the DS. So what, uh, this divided by this length will give us the phi2. Okay? The summation of these two angles is uh, simply the uh, shear strain. And the shear stress is related to uh, this gamma, simply tau equal g gamma. And if we multiply t here on both sides, what does it mean? This is a simply q, right? And this one is the gt, and, and gamma is the two angles. That's the relation. OK, that's the relation. Now, uh, I we simply, okay, this is a key part, we simply integrate this part on both sides, integrate from a initial point to a, to, to, to a, uh, I mean, the 
whole S enclosing whole uh, uh, along the all, whole line. What do we integrate? Well, we just uh, integrate these two angles, P1 plus P2. To do that, we need to divide uh, Q divided by GT, Q divided by GT. So we simply integrate, integrate this, this one, DS. And this V1 is simply defined like that and ds and v2 is defined like that and how about this g i mean sorry q q is constant right constant and needs to be can be out of this integration so ds over gt well g is the material property and G is usually constant but in more general sense it can have can vary so I will just uh, put it inside the integrant so what uh, DS of GT equal now let's take a look at this part DS DZ integrate over ds if you look at you know the ds what does i mean us what is the us us is the simply s s directional s directional displacement caused by this rotation This is the uh, uh, U.S. Okay. Again, this cross section is rotating by theta, and any point, it, the displacement the U.S. is a tangential displacement at this point, can be represented by this vertical distance p times theta. Am I right? S. Okay, let me uh, draw again. This is the X and this is the Y cross sections. And any part, this one is the rotating by theta. Whole cross sections rotating by theta. And any point will have have displacement u s s rational u displacement and u s is a simply vertical distance p okay p times what this angle theta that is the tangential displacement right Well, at, at this point, at this point, if, if we have the theta, that displacement at that point will be simply p times theta. Right? The theta is already a small amount of displacement, I mean the rotations, the theta. Okay? So p times, p is a simply uh, a vertical distance. When no, no, it's a tangential displacement. Okay, let's take a look at the circular cross sections. Okay, if we have the rotation by theta and any point, how much this point will rotate? This will rotate simply. R times theta. 
Am I right? Simply R times theta is the displacement, tangential displacement. This is, this is nothing but this one, right? okay? But this one is not quite circular, so we have to consider vertical distance P. Or well, I would say just R, okay? R, R would be more, uh, a little easier to understand. R is the just uh, vertical distance. Okay, so uh, this one, this US is the from here, R times theta and, and DS. And the second term, if you look at this second term, D, U, Z, D, S. U, Z is again this uh, cross-sectional. Uh, Z is the vertical to uh, this cross-section. And D, S, this, D, S disappear. And U, Z is the initial and last. I mean, integration D, U, Z, meaning that if we integrate from the starting point to a last point will be the same, so this term those two z directional z directional displacement will be the same so the second term will simply disappear so what the term this one as you can see here again d theta over dz d theta over dz is the rate of the uh, displacement you know the d uh, phi dz the same as that one. I just use the theta here, but you, you may say this is the d phi dz, okay? And d phi dz is the constant, and we can take this one out of integration, and simply r times ds. What is this? What is this one? Again, this is the twice of the uh, twice of the area. That is the, exactly the same as uh, the, this one. H times the delta S. Okay, we, we call H here. I should have used the same notation. Okay, this is the uh, H or R is all the same meaning. Now, so uh, here, the finally we, we have D, D phi dz is given as q times q divided by 2a integrate ds over gt. That's the twist rate. And if we say um, simply phi 0 over l, okay, this d theta d z is uh, phi 0 over l, and this one, this term, I will uh, rewrite here, Q2A, and simply G and T, they are same. If they are same, what do we have here? GT is constant, okay? And simply integrate the length of this line, length of this line. So anyhow, uh, you have to uh, uh, understand this final equation. Of course, you need to understand the derivation, uh, which are leading to uh, lead to uh, th this one. And also, uh, uh, Q equal given uh, T of over uh, 2a, that's the, uh, th uh, those are two final equation. Okay, uh, Application of a torsion, uh, torsion theory, where simply uh, 
This is the one of the uh, simple applications solving problems involving constraint of deformation of the, this actually two shaft. We have the shaft A and B, and each shaft could have different material property or could have different uh, radius. And there is torque you applied at junction, and the question will, will be how much torque reactions you, we, we, we will get, and how much fee we will get at that point. That is the typical uh, torsion problems, and which is very much similar to uh, Let's say we have a two different uh, bar and, and subject to a force P here, right? And then uh, we calculate the two unknown reaction force and how much displacement we will have. And very much similar to this one, uh, we have the uh, shaft, two shafts at the uh, junction. We apply torque T and how much uh, reaction force and how much rotation uh, angle we will have. That's the one, one kind of problem. And here is the all solutions. And calculation of a shear stress in thin wall shaft. This is the circular, thin wall shaft. But let's say this is the uh, circular. See, in circular, we we, we drive uh, d v d z equal t over g j. GIP, right? And so this can be a circular cross section, but this can be also thin or shaft. So we can have a two different solution. And so a DVDZ is what? Do you remember? Q times 2A, like this one. 2A. And integration ds and and gt. Right here. And this should be same with a condition that t is very much small. Very much small compared to a, a radius. Can you see? That this one and this one is the same. Well, Q is simply what? T over 2 times A, right? So this can be here. And there's a G here. G here. So T here, T here. And what left is the 4A square and GT. And T integration ds. What is the integration ds in this case? Simply 2 times pi r. Right. Well, r i, r 0, they are, we can say is the same because t is very small. Or r 0 or whatever you can uh, And as you can see here, uh, so a times a times a square, four a square t, two times pi r zero. This one, and if we compare here, that should be one over i p. Is that right? Well, you can simply uh, verify this. That's one, uh, one thing, uh, DVDZ. And another thing is that uh, shear stress. From thin wall theory, we have the shear stress like that. And from here, we have a uh, torque IP times R. And this should be giving us the same uh, shear stress as well. 
Okay, and this uh, the uh, this result will uh, help you better understand uh, the meaning of a thin wall shaft. Thank <laughs> you.